So the time has finally come where I thought I would launch my own blue chip TV channel. Um, yeah, I thought I might as well just, you know, put out a quick skit video, literally five to ten minutes, just talking about the footballing stories, mainly about Liverpool and the start that they've had. And yeah, I'll be collaborating with loads more content creators back home. Uh, I know me and Soccer Guard from Gris Khan TV, we've got a show um, making my office at the back. I know there's nothing there at the moment, but a sofa's coming and we'll be doing some studio shows, me and Evan. Um, and we're just going to have a laugh with this channel. Like and subscribe if you want to. If you don't, it's all love anyway. And yeah, we'll go straight into it. Um, the Palace game. Pfft. Pfft. Deflation, isn't it really? It's been a... Uh, Bit of, I can't even say a poor start, it's been a really poor start. Um, we just haven't got going. Um, something seems up, something seems wrong, or whether the players just look goosed. Maybe the break wasn't long enough for them, but something's not quite right. Um, the only sort of spark or the only consolation that I took from that game was when we went down to 10 men, I thought we were brilliant. I thought we actually played really well and could have won the game. You know, I thought Joe Gomez had a great cameo when he did come on. He looked strong, looked assured, looked quick. You know, he looked like the Joe Gomez of the 2019-2020 season. And going forward, I think we've got to go with that now. We've got to go with Joe Gomez and Virgil van Dijk until Ibu's back. And even then, if these two can replicate the form of the championship winning season, then we've got to stick with it. But I think Joe Gomez deserves his chance now. Um, Naby was on the bench again. You probably know now that it's to do with contractual talks. There's rumours that, you know, he's he's not happy. I think it was reported yesterday by some German journalist. Fuck knows what his name is, but... You know, I've always sat on this fence when it comes to Naby. I do like the player. You know, I've made no qualms about that. I've always tweeted in support of Naby, but it seems as though... Next season could be his last season at the club. I wouldn't cash in on him. There's no point. You know, and it's fifty-five million pounds that that's gone horribly wrong. As much as we berate United about Paul Pogba, you know they can say the same thing about us with Naby Keita. So it's not worked out for him. I thought last season, to be honest, he did give us availability. Uh, it's just the quality that he was lacking week in week out. We would see some glimpses. I.e. the volley against Palace and that celebration. You know, Eric Cantona was absolutely brilliant. The goal against Atletico Madrid, and then he gets hauled off because of some silly mistakes in that game. I thought United away he was brilliant until you know that Arsenal Pogba put it on him. So Naby played quite well, you know, in some games last season. But you know, it's that quality that we want to see. It's those progressive runs that we saw in Leipzig, and whether injuries have hampered that, you know, and he's had to alter his game, or Klopp wants a certain style from him and a certain sort of strict structural way of him playing you know we've been starved of that Leipzig Naby Keita you know because he was brilliant there you know absolutely brilliant um, in other news I saw the links with Sander Burge which gave me a fucking chuckle because I remember when we played Genk was it in the Champions League he was a player of interest back then and then he goes off to Sheffield United, joins Rian Brewster under, um, what was that fucking little face, what's his name? Chris Wilder, under Chris Wilder, and you know, he didn't really show any quality, not that I saw, and not that I'm a big, avid Sheffield United watcher of their football, but yeah, and he stayed in the championship last season, I think he scored like, what, six, six seven goals, and you know, now there's, there were rumours on Twitter today that there's talk of uh, Sander Burge, which... Uh, yeah, it makes me fucking crack up when you consider that Matthias Nunes has gone to Wolverhampton Wanderers, a player that I sort of have been watching over the last few months. That sporting Lisbon team, I quite like it with Ruben Amaram as their manager and they've got Pedro Gonçalves, some good, good players. And he, he does stand out. Matthias Nunes did stand out for sporting Lisbon. And I know James Pierce, a respected journalist, for the Athletic said that it was nonsense. I don't think it was nonsense. I believe, not that I've 
got any credible sources or anything, but I believe there was interest in Mateusz Nunes, but one way or another, maybe we didn't want to pay the 50 million, whether that's gone back to the board or that's a Jurgen Klopp issue, God only knows, but I think we're going to see a quality, quality player in him, alongside Ruben Neves, João Moutinho, the experienced João Moutinho, I think Mateus Nunes will shine at that Wolves team, and next season we could be talking about an 80 to 100 million pound player. Few whispers in the last few hours from South American outlets that Moises Caicedo, Caicedo, Caicedo has been linked with Brighton. Uh, ultimately, he's Yves Basuma's replacement in that Brighton team, so I don't know if they're gonna part ways with him. But anyone over fucking Sander Burge, like who the fuck is Sander Burge? Like literally, even if he's a stopgap, couldn't give a flying, you know, F. There's no chance that I want a player of that at my club. Um, that would be even worse than when we had Stephen Colker come on loan from what was it QPR was it um, so no definitely not for me we could already see what Joe Allen's up to um, is he still at Stoke has he gone back to Swansea I think he's back, gone back to Swansea Joe Allen could still do a job for us but yeah no all jokes aside I think he's definitely a position that we've got to look in um, Lukas Sucic his name's been banded about but again at 19 maybe Salzburg is the best um development for him for another year. Nicola Barella, again, Italians, we've had that sort of Albo Aquilani at Liverpool, which didn't quite work out. So, you know, the, I'm always skeptical about Italian players coming over to the Premiership, just the pace of the game. Um, but yeah, and just other news, there's news of Casemiro going to United, uh, which baffles me. He's, he's not going because he wants to further enhance his career or he's gone to win trophies there. He's gone for the fucking moolah, isn't it? He's gone for the money. What are they? Offering him like 350, 400k <coughs> a week. Just goes to show that they're not giving Ten Hag the flexibility or the freedom that he's probably asked for. And this is going to be a rinse and repeat thing at United. And until they get rid of that rat Ronaldo, um, I can't see anything changing. But yeah, um, this was just a quick, quick sort of seven to ten minutes just to churn out a video. Um, and I'll be doing more shows, more live shows. I'm going to get my um, stream all set up, my intro videos coming soon. I will be on GrizzCon TV on Saturday. I know he's having a change of the name to his channel. Uh, all shall be revealed. But um, I'll let him reveal um, what he's calling it on Saturday or maybe next week. I'll also be on Born and Red tomorrow, which is Friday, 9 p.m. UK time. But yeah, guys, like and subscribe if you want. I'll make sure my background and all this green sheet stuff looks better next time. But yeah, have a good one and we'll catch you soon.